Let's start with an application here. Um, a man wants to use milk and juice to increase the amount of calcium and vitamin A in his diet. An ounce of milk contains 37 milligrams of calcium and 57 micrograms of vitamin A. An ounce of juice contains 5 milligrams of calcium and 65 micrograms of vitamin A. How many ounces of each should he consume daily to provide exactly 500 milligrams of calcium and 1200 micrograms of vitamin A? Well, since it, it tells me what we're looking for, how many ounces of each, let's just let X be the number of ounces of milk and Y be the number of ounces of juice he should consume. Now if you look at your table, you know that you need to have 500 units of calcium and so the milk will give you 37 milligrams of calcium per ounce and the juice will give you 5 milligrams of calcium per ounce. So if you take 37 times X plus 5 times Y that's the actual calcium intake and that needs to equal 500. The vitamin A we need 1200 and each ounce of milk gives you 57 units of vitamin A and each ounce of juice gives you 65 units of vitamin A so 57 X plus 65 Y would equal the uh, actual intake units of vitamin A and that has to equal 1200. Now to solve this I had to think a little bit here so what I had to do was think how could I get one of these to eliminate and so I thought well if I multiply 5 by 13 that will give me 65 but since I need them to be opposites let's multiply this by negative 13 so that I'd have opposite signs. So I'm going to take the first equation and multiply each term by negative 13 and then that will give me this, negative 481x minus 65y equals negative 6500. And then when I add these two together, the negative 65y and the plus 65y cancel. Negative 481x plus 57x gives me negative 424x. And negative 6500 plus 1200 gives me negative 5300. And then if I just divide negative 424 into negative 5300, I actually get 12.5. So that means I need 12 and a half ounces of milk and then to solve for the juice I can just plug 12 and a half in for X in this first equation and get 37 times 12 and a half plus 5y equals 500 and then that gives me 462.5 plus 5y equals 500 and then subtract both sides, subtract 462.5 from both sides and I get 5y equals 37.5 and then finally divide both sides by 5 and I get y equals 7.5 ounces of juice. So the answer would be 12 and a half ounces of milk and 7 and a half ounces of juice. Now I wanted to go ahead and show you that when you solve these equations you don't always get nice round numbers. So let's go ahead and solve this system by the addition method and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the y's eliminate. So here I see that I have 3y and 4y. Now let me just tell you there's, there's more than one way to do these but I'm going to make the y's eliminate here by multiplying I'm going to multiply the first equation by 4 and then that'll give me 20x plus 12y equals 40 and I'm going to multiply the second equation by negative 3 and that will give me negative 9x minus 12y equals 6. Now when I add these together the y's will cancel and then I will get 20x minus 9x is 11x and then when I add the 40 and the 6 I get 46. So, so basically you can see that I get 11x equal 46 and then divide both sides by x by 11 and you get x equals 46 over 11, which is not a, a, a round number there that, that we usually would get. But I can still solve this by plugging the 46 11 into this first equation. So if I take this first equation and replace x with 46 over 11, I get 5 times 46 over 11 plus 3y equals 10. And then when you multiply that, that's 230 over 11 plus 3y equals 10. And so if I subtract 
uh, 230 over 11 from both sides, that would be 10 minus 230 over 11. And by the way, I went ahead and wrote 10 with the common denominator of 11. So I just multiplied this by, by 11 over 11, and then that would make that 110 over 11. So I end up with 3y equals 110 over 11 minus 230 over 11. So that's 3y equals minus 120 over 11. And then if you multiply both sides by one third, it's the same as dividing both sides by three, you'll get negative 40 over 11. So your x value is 46 over 11 and your y value is negative 40 over 11. So again, that's just to show you that the numbers don't always have to be integer values. Okay, here's another couple of examples that you can set up here. It says a play has 500 seats. We did one very similar to this earlier, so we'll just kind of summarize this. Child tickets cost $2. Adult tickets cost $3. A sold out performance brings in a revenue of $13.50. How many child and adult tickets were sold? Well, you know you're going to sell a total of 500 tickets, so x plus y must equal 500. And you know the total revenue is $13.50, so you get $2 per child ticket plus $3 per adult ticket, so 2x plus 3y must equal 13.50. So those are your two equations there. Now, the next one says a manufacturer produces two types of bicycles, 3-speed and 5-speed. It takes one hour to assemble a three-speed bike and two hours to assemble a five-speed bike. It takes two hours to paint a three-speed bike and three hours to paint a five-speed bike. There are only 20 hours available for assembly and there's 33 hours available to paint. How many bikes of each type must be produced each day in order to utilize all of the assembly and painting time? Well, it says how many bikes should we produce each day, so let's uh, X be the number of three-speed bikes produced and y be the number of five-speed bikes produced. So then this should be pretty easy to, to set up because basically we've got the 20 hours available for assembly. So the 20 represents your assembly. That's your assembly time that's available. And then the 33 represents the number of hours available to paint. So let's think about how do we utilize that assembly time? Well, it takes one hour to assemble each three-speed bike, so that would be one times x would be the assembly time for my three-speed bikes, and it takes two hours to assemble a five-speed bike, so two times y would be the assembly time for the five-speed bikes, so the total assembly time must be x plus 2y, and that's got to equal the 20 hours available to assemble the bikes. And then for the paint, it takes, uh, where is it at, two hours to paint a three-speed bike. So 2x would be the time it takes to paint the three-speed bikes. And three hours to paint a five-speed bike. So 3y would be the time it takes to paint, a five, to paint all the five-speed bikes. So 2x plus 3y is the total time for painting, and that has to equal 33 hours. So that's your system of equations for that one. Now I'm going to finish you with a dependent system. So I want to show you how you can actually write the solution set for a dependent system. So let me just show you this. So if I take this system of equations here, I can multiply the first equation by negative 3, and that will give me negative 6x plus 3y equals negative 15. And then if I add that to the second equation, notice that if I add these together, all of these will cancel the negative 6x plus 6x, the 3y minus 3y, and the negative 15 plus 15 will cancel. So I'll just get an equation that says 0 equals 0. Now, that tells me I have a dependent system, and that's because both equations represent the same equation. Therefore, both equations represent the same set of points. So if I want to know what set of points to represent, what I can do is I can actually take uh, either one of these equations. I'll just take the first equation. And I'm going to solve this for x in terms of y. So to solve this for x in terms of y, I'll get 2x equals y plus 5, and then divide both sides by 2. That'll give me x equals 1 half y plus 5 halves. Now, that tells me that whatever y is, x is related to y in this fashion. x is going to be 1 half of y plus 5 halves. So I can simply say, 
that y is just the y value and that the x value is related to that in this fashion. The x value would be one half of that y value plus five halves. And that gives me uh, the entire set of solutions. So for any number of y you choose, you could plug y in here and get the corresponding x value. Now, if you don't want to use the original variables, which some texts don't like to use the original variables, you could just pick another uh, variable like k, and then instead of having y here, you'd have k here, but then x would be related to k in the same fashion, 1 half k plus 5 halves, so that would be your solution set. Now here, we're saying that y could be any real number, and here we're saying that k could be any real number. And we'll talk more on um, dependent systems later. And I don't teach uh, solving systems using calculators, but you can search online or on YouTube if you wish, and you might find uh, some little tricks you can use on solving systems. Okay, so on the next uh, video, I'm going to enter solving systems using matrix methods.